It is official. Matt O'Reilly has finally left Celtic. He joins Brighton. However, up front, he has not broken the record transfer fee, but he has equaled it at 25 million, the same amount of money that Arsenal paid for Celtic's Kieran Tierney back in 2019. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. Now, yes, O'Reilly has joined Celtic. That's what we're going to talk about today for us. So let's just uh, quickly get that out there. We already made a video. About him earlier, but uh, it's Matt O'Reilly, it's £25 million, it's worth talking about again. It is worth talking about again, I did say earlier I wouldn't talk about it again, but here, a few short hours later I'm talking about it again, so let's talk about it again. Going to stop talking about it again? Aye, I'm going to stop talking about it again, but... So, £25 million up front, but it is being believed that there is add-ons that would take it beyond that, but, I mean, we don't really know what those add-on deals exist of right now, so at the moment only £25 million. Could Celtic have got a little bit more for them? Did he want? Did they want more for him? I don't know. I mean, there was talk about thirty plus million. I believe that when you factor in the add-ons, it probably will be worth about thirty odd million. But it is. you know, for me, I, I thought Celtic would have got a bit more just considering how many bids they'd previously rejected from yeah. Matt O'Reilly. I think Celtic were fearing it. I think they were like, "Oh, if we reject any more, might not be able to sell in this window." No, but they re rejected quite a lot of bids for him. I thought they were holding out to actually, you know, get that record breaking clear ahead of Tierney. I thought they would have wanted maybe 30 mil up front with add ons rather than 25 mil up front with add ons that might take it to 30 in the future. But it is what it is. O'Reilly, 27 goals and 127 appearances for Celtic, but most of them definitely came in that last season. He won six trophies, including three Scottish Premiership titles. So. Uh, yeah, he said on the Brighton website, I'm very, very happy. It got a little bit stressful over the last couple of weeks, if I'm being honest, because I think the talks were going for a good couple of months, but I'm just really happy to be here now. End of quote. So, O'Reilly, happy to be at Brighton, and that's him done. That's him gone. He's gone. Will he be adding any league titles to his resume at Brighton? Probably not, but uh, good move. And, yeah, I mean, it is £30 million factoring in the add-on, so it is a transfer fee. It's a record transfer fee, so let's move on. We've talked about it, honestly. I cannot be arsed talking about it Yeah, anymore. but since we're on the topic of Celtic, we'll stay there because reports coming from pretty much everywhere are that Odson Edward is lined up for a stunning Celtic transfer, a return to the Scottish champions, and it's been reported by Daily Record, The Sun, pretty much every other major football newslet out there so yeah obviously we know the Frenchman was signed by Brendan Rodgers and I'm sure Brendan Rodgers would love to have him back but if Celtic I just don't see this happening and if it does happen I think this means Kyogo's definitely away because Celtic have spent what 9.5 on a day you think of the wages that Edward's going to be on he's going to be on way more than a day and Kyogo I mean he'd probably be he'd probably be pretty close to both their wages combined and then I just don't see how you've got someone as good as Kyogo possibly being third choice or Adam Adea, a £9.5 million signing being third choice. I think if Celtic do get Edward back, then it means that Kyogo's at the door. Obviously, Adea's not going anywhere because he's just signed. Yeah, you know, I think it makes Celtic weaker if they lose Kyogo and bring in Edward, despite him being, what, three, four years younger. Uh, I mean, he, he still wore Rangers like a fucking hat last time he was in Scotland, apart from his last year. But uh, yeah, um, I would rather them. I would rather them sign Edward and get rid of Kyogo. That's what I would rather from a Rangers perspective. And I've the general consensus on Twitter is of the uh, the latter. They would rather actually keep Kyogo. For is that from Rangers fans or Celtic fans? Celtic fans. I'm saying I'd rather them sign Edward and get rid of Kyogo. The Celtic fans would rather keep Kyogo and I not get Edward. A, a key thing is, is that I think Adia and Edward are quite similar. I think Kyogo is something completely different, and I think it works having him and someone else. Yeah, although like, no, but like if you if you sub off Adia right for Edward, it's like it's like for like. True. Although there was once upon a time where Lee Griffiths was actually. You know, a good attacking player and Celtic once had Edward, Griffiths and Dembele as an attacking free for a season. So, I mean, who's to say that Edward, Adea, Kyogo couldn't all be at Celtic at the same time? Oh, Hartson, Larson and bloody Sutton. So, yeah, like Celtic have had trios of great strikers before, or good strikers before. 
But I'm just not convinced that this current Celtic team they're going to bring in Ed Edward, who's on what ninety grand a week. Yes, I think they'd get him for slightly less than that. He'd have to take a pay cut, but I'm just not convinced they're bringing Edward in. I, well, I tell you what, man, they're going to sign the left back. They're going to probably sign two midfielders if they put Edward on top of that. I don't see how anyone can even have a complaint about what they've spent this summer. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, as for Rangers. Still haven't brought anybody in, but Hadji has turned down a move away. He had a chance to go to Rapid Bucharest, and he has said no. So uh, Hadji then, remaining at Rangers. Rangers want red. Hadji doesn't want to go anywhere. This whole thing is baffling for me, man. I think Hadji's a good player. Why the fuck wouldn't Rangers give him an opportunity? It's not like Rangers are blessed with players in that position. It's not like Tom Lawrence and Todd Cantwell are fucking two Ibrox legends and Hadji wouldn't have an opportunity to get in front of them like I mean no one actually I, I baffles don't get me it. though right what is going to happen if the window slams shut and Yanis Hadji's still here is he actually just not going to play well no what's the end game here I'm worried I'm panicking well, I'm panicking oh, no what is the end game I just don't get it Fun fact, he's never lost a game against Celtic. So, see, for that, I'd fucking play him up front. Alright, but look, say this... Not ten, up front, behind the assets. Say this 10 grand a week, shite, that they have to give him. Let's, so, let's say, assume that's true. There's less than what? By the time the transfer window ends, there'll be about 20 weeks to January transfer window. So, you're talking 200k. Let's say Rangers start playing him, and they trigger that 10k... And he starts playing well. Even if they still want to get rid of him in January. That 200k is going to be repaid in transfer value. I think it might be beginning to be more of a financial fair play thing rather than Rangers or Skin. It feels more like if, Rain if, if they trigger a thing with Hadji, they could be in deep shit. Because to, to me, if it's just a simple case of we don't want to pay that, that's embarrassing. Well, they plan on bringing players in, don't they? Is this a or are they going to pay them? Nothing? Is this why they loaned him out last year? We thought it was because he fell out with Beal. Or did they be like, oh shit, if we play Hadji one more game, he's going to get a massive increase. Let's loan him out. Alright, does Cantwell not want away? Ah, that prick does, eh? Well, surely if Cantwell goes, there's no excuse to not start playing Hadji. Well, Cantwell's not currently playing, so why, why is it an excuse not to play Hadji? I don't get it anyway, guys. Another thing I don't Apparently really... the bid was 375k, so no one does. But it says Hadji rejected it. So apparently what, so Rangers have accepted... Yeah, if Rangers can't... Listen, see if Rangers can't pay him, why wouldn't you just sell him for that amount? Get him off the wage bill, and it gets you a bit of money. Yeah, but apparently Hadji rejected it. Yeah, but you originally said, you know, 375, no wonder they rejected it. Let's pretend Hadji didn't reject it. If Rangers aren't going to play the guy anyway, you, you may as well just sell, get him off the wage bill and get a wee bit of money. I agree, but... Anyway, Napoli are about to sign Billy Gilmore for approximately, what, is it £8 million? £12 million. To me, that's shocking. We've seen that McTomney, and like, I've defended McTomney, but for me, Billy Gilmore, I think he's he must be the most valuable midfielder Scotland have. I used to think it was McGinn, but McGinn is approaching 30 now. And I just think that Gilmore, the more you see a Gilmore, the more impressive he is. I'd say Gilmore should be the most expensive Scottish midfielder at the moment. See Gilmore? Probably next to Lewis Ferguson, to be honest. But he should be closer valued to 100 million than 12. You no, know, I'm not. See the English market and, and what Brighton sell their fucking players for, by the way. Yeah, well, like why, Casido, why is it, to uh, Chelsea? McAllister, fucking Cucurella, we're talking 80, we're talking 100, 120, why the fuck not? Can't he go for like 60? It's probably because they're selling him to Napoli and not... Oh, but that's ridiculous. Yeah, but the club, the, 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 Napoli won't pay that kind of money. So, see, uh, you're actually hampered by not selling to within the league. Napoli, See, Napoli would be better off saying to all these foreign clubs now, you're alright, we'll just, we'll just sell to the, no, the big clubs I'm, in England. I'm not even exaggerating, right? But see Billy Gilmore, I think he can do a job at any team in the Premier League. Even Man City. Absolutely. See, see for £12 million, I, I, I see no reason not to take a punt on him. I think his style suits Man City. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about Dundee. They were once linked with Edgar at Davids and it, it never happened, although it was, it was close to happening, but... Yeah, another big signing that could happen is Ronaldinho's son, Joa Mendes, is reportedly going to Dundee on loan. So he spent last year with the Barcelona Academy, I believe he's been signed by Brighton since then. 
And now it looks like he is on the verge of a loan move to Dundee. Which I think would be uh, pretty damn insane if that happened in there. I'd love to see it. Yeah, but it's just his son, man. It would be better if they were actually getting Ronaldinho. Well, you'd want 50-year-old Ronaldinho over his son? He's not 50. 45-year-old? Aye, that's more like I would. Imagine the, the shirt sales. I think they'll sell shirts well enough, to be honest. Well, this guy. Why can't he just his call name, himself... His name's not Ronaldinho. Though. Why not just call himself Ronaldinho Jr.? Well, that's what he should call himself, but... Marketing? Ronald McDonald, more like it, fucking Dundee. Yeah, anyway, guys, we'll see. I mean, even Ronaldinho can he play that Dundee pitch. So, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. That's the transfer news. Celtic bringing in players. The rest of the league doing absolutely hee-haw. <laughs> Pretty much. I love it. One team's got money. Everybody's got fucking... Clinically depressed. Ah, uh, depression. <laughs> I'd rather have the cash, like, but whatever. Till next the jambos, time. Huh? <sighs>